saw you and him walking in the rain. You were holding hands and now never be the same. Tossing and turning another sleepless night. The rain crashes against my window pane. Jumped into my car, didn't drive too far. That moment I knew I I would would never never be the the same. same. I saw you and him walking in the rain. We were holding hands and now never be the same. Let's start the show. Episode 81. We are your hosts, John, Steph, and myself, Keith. We are joining you guys today as we are coming in hot and fast towards the, well, I was about to say the end of summer, but the end of summer ain't until September, ain't it? Yes. Yeah, the 21st. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, for for most places, but you know, for places like Florida <laughs> where it's summer year round. Year round. Yeah. Year round, baby. Year round. Mm-hmm. John, how you feeling today? I am feeling uh great and uh nervous. All right. Well since my, Yeah. Nervous? Nervous? About? Yeah, car broke down. Oh yesterday. No. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experience. Mm. Oh, um, man. Sorry to hear that. That does suck. Yes. Got to deal with it. Yeah. Got to deal with it. So we'll get the bad news tomorrow. It oh, seems man. like car emergencies happen at the very worst of times. Like, I mean, there's no good time for a car to break down, but right. it seems right. like it happens smack in the middle of something going on. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, Steph. How are you doing? Um, I had a tough day, but you know, I'm I'm okay. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's understandable. Tough like how? Uh, had a tough client. Just had a client just having a mental meltdown and blaming everything on me. I'm the most horrible person in the world right now. So mm. this is really tough. Understood. Understood. That's good. That's good. Well, hopefully tomorrow's a better day for you. Because mm-hmm, I'm not going to work. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking you tomorrow. I hear you. I, I plan to be you. sick. So. Yeah, okay. Okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, I we have a jam-packed show for everyone today. Uh, We're just going to run through a couple of things here. I do want to, before we begin, I do want you guys to make sure that if you do have a Facebook Facebook account on Thursdays at 720, my mother, Antoinette Johnson, goes live (laughs) every Thursday at the Antoinette Johnson's Bling Bling Blue Room. Please search her name, Antoinette Johnson, on Facebook. You will be there as she is selling a lot of different goods. She has a lot of uh, material for uh, dresses. Um, She has some uh, jewelry goods, some uh, hats, uh, you name it. She has some black girl magic earrings, um, even some Puerto Rican girl dresses. (laughs) (laughs) But she has something for everyone. So please, every Thursday, check her out. 7.20 7.20 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook. Her name is Antoinette Johnson. And I also want to give a shout out to my family. I know that we 
had a tough time last week, but everyone's still hanging in there. Much love out to my uh, my aunt and also my um, cousins as we've you know dealt with the passing of my uncle. But everyone is hanging in there. So just want to give a shout out to my family. You know, things like that happen. But as long as we come together and, um, you know, as a family and, you know, just love on each other. Now, I also want to take the time out here to thank everyone for supporting us. We've launched our YouTube page and we've had some people, uh, you know, subscribe, watch the videos, listen subscribe some of them views ain't adding up with them subscribers we got more <laughs> views than we got subscribers when you go on our page just hit that damn button that say subscribe it's right there just hit subscribe that way you get alerts every time we drop a video you'll see what we have coming out last week we had a very good episode that is quickly climbing up in views um the week before that we had a nice episode where john visually you could see what john is experiencing with his sleep paralysis and our responses to that so please take the time out to subscribe to our youtube page follow us we definitely try to drop videos every week at least once a week you may get two videos who knows it just depends on what's going on john can you please tell them how they can support the short desk podcast yes sir just want to add on to that youtube just just don't subscribe hit the notification bell so you can get all of our notifications whenever we drop new content and also hit the like button please hit that like button uh facebook instagram and twitter Please tag us for, in reference to Facebook. It's the Short Desk Podcast. On Instagram, it's at the Short Desk Podcast. And Twitter, it's just simply the Short Desk. Email us at Gmail or on Gmail account, the Short Desk Podcast at gmail.com. Any show ideas, top tens, uh, any topics that you would like us to tackle, doesn't matter what it is. Um, it would be greatly appreciated to add content uh, to this platform. Please download us on Apple Podcasts, Apple iTunes, and Spotify. Leave your five-star ratings on all three of those platforms. The only difference is Apple Podcasts and Apple iTunes. You can also leave us a comment. Don't forget to leave your five-star rating on Good Pods as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for that, John. And Steph. We have over 739 cities in 59 countries or whatever you want to call them that are supporting <laughs> us with the short desk podcast. Can you go ahead and give that shout out to that city this week that you want to highlight that is supporting the short desk podcast? Yes. This week's highlight goes to South Croydon, England. Um, it's a suburb of London with a population of 15,790. It is also the highest property wealth. It has the highest property wealth in the London area. And it's also 50.7% uh, black, Asian, or minority ethnic, um, which they're now um, just for short BAME. So oh. thank you, South Croydon. Wow. That is wonderful. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Uh, John, I know that uh, you wanted to get a couple of things out there, speak on a few things. So we're going to give the floor to you real quick just to say what you have to say. It's not a few things. It's just the thing. All right. Uh, <laughs> my mother was not. Uh, she was none too uh, thrilled with the story uh, that I laid out for everyone yesterday. I did embellish a bit last week. Uh, not yesterday. Last week, uh, I did embellish a bit as far as the colorful language uh, uh, that was displayed <laughs> when I was thirteen. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and enter in an apology. Sorry, mother, um, for framing you in that light. Um, she did end up getting kicked out of the baseball game, but the um, the four letter expletives and and things of that nature weren't uttered. Um, she kept it clean. Uh, so uh, once again, uh, that's an error on my part. Uh, did not uh, intend or uh, 
want to frame my mother in that light. But once again, I do apologize, mom. Hmm. All right. I know that last week, Miss Steph said she wasn't going to laugh along because she didn't want any smoke. She didn't want to be part of the shenanigans that I allegedly you and I were putting on by you telling the story and, and myself laughing. Is that correct, Steph? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Well, sorry about that, Miss Patty. <laughs> you got kicked out, but uh, apparently you got kicked out without a fight. So I, I enjoyed it with with the embellishing, but I guess that's uh, uh, what it was. <laughs> You're gonna get it next. <laughs> You're gonna get it next. Uh, listen, I'm just trying. <laughs> I mean, it was a true story. I just <laughs> added too much colorful language that wasn't uttered. So that again. didn't happen. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, I anything mean, to entertain the audience. Anytime I bring the stories are not up. stopping though. I'm yeah. Anytime I bring my mother up, I catch it, but I laugh at her. Because I don't embellish. I tell it. She's still oh, wow. mad that I told y'all that she slapped me with that pork chop, but she did. <sighs> that poor lady. She really puts up with a lot um, with you. <laughs> Wait my a heart. minute. Why is it me and not my her? Heart and my prayers go out to her. Well, we did find out on the youtube episode that so many of you have missed that it doesn't take much for you to get violent as you got kicked out of your oh, dorm gosh. room your freshman oh year gosh. i'm not violent um, i'm as sweet as can be but you know i ain't no killer but don't push me see what i'm saying mm. you're the same way did no, you not just not say you're did you not just say that you're not allowed to coach little league or or any sports there's a reason for that So, John, before mm-hmm. we uh, get into <laughs> our special guest today that we're going to bring on with us, can you give us a big time story? And hopefully this time, no one's going to hang you upside down like Big Red. <laughs> the only person that could do that is your mom. So, <laughs> From, <laughs> from uh, what's the movie called? I'm about to call five it The Heart Fighting Beats. Temptations. Yeah, The Five <sighs> Heartbeats. My daddy's favorite movie. All right. Give us a big time story today, John. Okay. Well, I probably had to be about four or five uh, when this uh, story occurred. Mm-hmm. I was, we're in our apartment and it's just me, my brother and my mother. I think my dad was at work at the time. And, um, of course, when you're a kid, you're a sponge. So you, uh, you're in tune with your surroundings, uh, especially when it comes to language and the type of language that's used. So, uh, in this department, um, sound reverber- reverberates, uh, quite easily because there's wood paneling everywhere. <laughs> and then, um, uh, right when you entered the apartment, there's this door. I don't know why there's a door uh, in this apartment because it's a fire hazard, but whatever. It's a door that leads to the master bedrooms and the guest bedrooms, and you know, my brother and uh, and 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 myself's. Uh, my goodness, that doesn't sound right, but at least our bedroom. So, um, my brother and I are playing one day and I guess we are chasing ourselves so to speak in our room and so um, one particular day as we are exiting the room I guess we're I guess we felt we were a bit constricted so I exit the room and start running towards that door Uh, that basically leads to the little foyer area make a quick right to where the living room area and where the uh, the dining room area is. So I exit the door and I'm rounding the corner and I wanted to leave my brother 
in the dust so he doesn't make it through the door. So I slammed the door and then I uttered the words, let's get the hell out of here. Oh, no. (laughs) And I thought my mom was in the master bedroom taking a nap or something. But no, (laughs) she was right around the corner on the couch watching something on television. And so when I round the corner and I'm looking straight ahead at the sliding glass door, I see uh, in my peripheral, my mom stood up like the undertaker. (laughs) (laughs) And then she made like this quick head movement to her left. Like, what you say, boy? (laughs) so in my little four or five year old head I said well lie so um, I said oh man she said what you say boy I said boo boo she said I don't I don't think that's what you said what did you say so I said something else that had nothing to do with the phrase I just uttered it was probably like um, let's get the heck out of here I tried to dumb it down she Mm. said no I heard uh A curse word. Mm. H-E double hockey sticks. So then finally I relented and said, yeah, that was me. I said that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I said that. (laughs) So, um, of course, she was very upset. She was wondering where where I got that language from. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, um, of course, I didn't say it. I probably came from somebody in the household and I was just emulating what I what I had heard. So, you know, around this time when my parents were together and I was about to uh, basically get the brakes beat off of me. Oh, Lord. Um, of course, both my parents whooped me, but mm-hmm. there's a difference. Uh, when it came to whoopings from my father, they were very finite. They hurt, but once again, it was finite. So most of the times I got 10 licks with a belt Uh and that was it. I knew it was going to be 10 because it was always 10. He never went over that threshold, 10. My mother, uh, it was, uh, it it was, uh, not finite. It was undetermined. Mm. (laughs) How many licks you were going to get based upon how much endurance she had built up for the day. That's true. And of course, this is a Saturday af- afternoon, so she had plenty of endurance because she didn't have anywhere to be the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so to say I got my ass tore out the frame is an understatement on that mm. particular day. And of course, um, whenever my mother whips me, she has to whip me uh, and and and. She doesn't say the entire word. She has to um, say the consonants. <laughs> she rips you. So um, I don't think I, if if I would have just fessed up at the beginning and just said exactly what it was I said, I probably would have been granted some sort of leniency. But the fact that I lied uh, three times um, while giving my um, verbal affidavit um, led to... Uh, uh, a sore bottom, and then right after I got my uh, my butt whooped, I had to go take a hot bath. <laughs> right Ooh, Lord have mercy! I can just imagine. I don't know what that feels like, but I can I can imagine. Mm. What, John? Were you the bad twin? I think I was. I I yeah. did some stupid just... crap when I was a kid. I I, I remember one time. Um, I was probably seven years old. Mm-hmm. And I went to a friend's house without asking permission from my oh, parents. Man. And I was gone for quite some time. I had mm-hmm. left basically just to play uh, Nintendo uh, with mm-hmm. my friend. His name is Ryan. He lived in the same apartment complex as we did. And um, my parents were out looking for me for about four or five hours. Oh, no. Wow. Yeah. And so um, I finally oh, man. got home unaware that um, they had formed a search party <laughs> to come oh. and look for me. They didn't call the cops or anything like that, but um, my mother, my father uh, were out 
looking for me. And I finally made it home. I went through the sliding glass door and I might as well just got super kicked as soon as I got <laughs> yeah. made it to the threshold. So, yeah, there was that. There was a time where I took a pair of tweezers and I stuck it in a uh, wall socket. And Oh, my and, God. Yeah. I was what was wrong with you? Mischievous one. Then there's another story. I'll probably save it for another day. Um, Jeez. When we were two years old, and I'll just say that we had these, um, you know, those little noise makers that you push in front of you. They have, and they're like in these little domes, and there there's wheels, and they make this popping sound. Yeah, within yeah, the dome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, okay. um, yeah, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll save that for another day. You know, maybe we need to do a show about twins because you know, growing up in the house with twins is not for the weak. Oh yeah, you did grow up in the house with Ooh. twins. Your younger brother, younger sister. Wow. It's not for the week. Man. Yeah, we need to do a story on that. That'll be very fun. Damn, John. But you know what? If you look at the pictures, you do have a mischievous grin on your face when you're smiling in those pictures. Yeah. Mischievous enough to utter the words, um, let's get the hell out of her in the purview yes. of my mother. So, yeah. <laughs> Did you get your brother in trouble a lot? <laughs> Absolutely not. I earned those whoopings by myself. I never, okay. I, I never said, "Well, he did it," or no, I, no. Cause see, my my brother, he would do stuff, and everybody was gonna catch heat. But I used to, um, I used to pass out, fake pass out, so I could get out of those spankings. Oh my god, fake pass out. <laughs> that sounds about right. You can my, miss my mom. I have step. to tell y'all about that. We were talking about that this morning. I faked a heart attack before. Oh my goodness! Um, at, at the age of like ten, um, I faked pass what? out. Yeah, I wasn't gonna get no belt was gonna touch me by oh any means god. necessary. And my grandma would tell my mama, "Don't you touch her." Uh my yeah, daddy be like, you're rough. killing her. But yeah. Wow. Gee whiz. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, well, we do have our special guest on with us today. We don't want to waste any time bringing him back on. He's one of the favorites to come on, friend of the show. He is the professor. Antoine, what's going on, man? How you doing? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Great. When I tell you, I am crying over here right now. <laughs> that story was something, wasn't it? Oh gosh. Mm. Oh man. Mm. Yes, wow. Yes, yes. So, how you been doing, Antoine? I have been good. All things considered. We're fresh off of a, um, a teaching, a summer thing at, at, at Princeton and a vacation at Toronto. So Whoa. I, I'm i freshly charged. We ready. <laughs> okay. Uh, a vacation in Toronto. Ooh, Can you believe it? Like? I went on vacation. Mm-hmm. It was it was amazing. When I, when I got there, um, actually, uh, Carbano was going on. Oh, okay. Ooh. Not know about it. it's like basically the international gathering of all of the islands so a fun time was had by all <laughs> all right okay. Great. so antoine you don't go on many vacations i don't i i'm a i'm a homebody i am a homebody i like home when i when I, whenever i am off whatever that may mean for a professor all my teachers and professor folks get that um, I chill at the house because it's like I'm not here that often. And I feel like you know I'm, I'm giving my money every month. I need to enjoy what's going on. <laughs> so instead of just paying bills, right? But I'm gonna do my best to take more vacations. So all that to say is I'm great. I'm good. How are you? Well, you all, I guess I should say. Yeah, we're doing oh, fine. All right. Yeah. Ready, ready to jump into this stuff that's been going on with you. Mm-hmm. Let's ready jump. To hear what you got to say. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump. So I'm gonna lead us with the most important headline to me. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna talk about Breonna Taylor. Um, as you know, Breonna Taylor was murdered um, by police with a no knock search warrant. So I'm going to read this article that was published. This is um, giving credit to People magazine. Uh, this is the latest in that case. As you know, there was a no-knock warrant 
they came in, shot up, killed her. And at the time, the police officers that um, killed her were, you know, pretty much cleared. Well, a former detective accused of falsifying the affidavit used to obtain a search warrant of Breonna Taylor's Louisville apartment will plead guilty later this month, according to multiple reports. Mm -hmm. The former detective Kelly Goodlett was arrested along with three other officers in connection with the botch raid that resulted resulted in the 26 years old's killing in 2020. In two separate federal indictments, Goodlett, Joshua James, Brett Hankinson, and Sergeant Kyle Meany were charged with civil rights and obstruction offenses, as well as unlawful conspiracies and unconstitutional use of force. During a virtual court appearance on Friday, Goodlett, 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 her attorney and a Justice Department attorney confirmed she will enter a guilty plea for one count of conspiring to violate the civil rights of Breonna Taylor, according to NBC News, Courier Journal, and the Washington Post. Mm-hmm. The guilty plea of Goodlett, who resigned after being charged, would mark the first conviction in connection with Taylor's death. Uh, Goodlett's arrangement will, when she will formally enter the plea, is scheduled for the afternoon of August 22nd before U.S. District Judge David J. Hill. Goodlett is currently out on $10,000 bond per court document seen by people. On Friday, Judge Regina Edwards told the former detective to surrender her passport and to have no contact with other defendants. She would get up to five years in prison according to Courier Journal. Mm -hmm. A lawyer for Goodlett did not immediately respond to people's requests for comment. A spokesperson from the Justice Department tells people the department has nothing further to add. Uh, Attorney Attorney General Merrick Garland announced the charges against Goodlett and her co-defendants earlier this month, alleging Taylor's rights, Breonna Taylor's rights, were violated when James, who was fired from the department in 2021, along with Meany and Goodlett, sought the warrant to search Taylor's home, knowing that the officers lacked probable, probable cause for the search. We allege that the defendants knew the affidavit in support of that warrant contained false and misleading information and that it omitted material information, Garland said. Authorities also alleged that James and many knew the search warrant would be carried out by armed LMPD officers and that conducting that search could create a dangerous situation for anyone who happened to be in Miss Taylor's home. Garland alleged officers also took steps to cover up their unlawful conduct after her death. James and Goodlett allegedly met in a garage weeks after the shooting in May, where they agreed to tell investigators a false story, the attorney general said. Breonna Taylor, an inspiring nurse who had been working as an EMT, was in her apartment with her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, shortly after midnight on the night of March 13th, when Louisville Metro Police officers executing a no-knock warrant charged through the door and fired more than 20 shots, killing Breonna Taylor. Her killing, along with the murder of George Floyd two months later, sparked nationwide protests against police brutality and racial injustice. So... That's a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, to me, it seems like a lot of nothing, but mm-hmm. um, they got away with murder. She could take a little plea deal, get a mm-hmm. couple of years. She's out on bond right now and join her life. She only had to put down a thousand dollars. Um, ten thousand. Ten thousand. I'm sorry. Ten thousand bond. Uh. Let's talk about this. Um, you know, we talked about this on the show, and you guys keep me on the straight and narrow, either episode 80 or 79 about um, the McGregor's with Ahmaud Aubrey. I think that was last week's episode, right? I believe so, yes. Okay. And I felt then that for the first time in one of these cases, I could truly say that justice was served um, when it comes to indictments and, you know, things of that nature. When um, these people are on trial, Um, it was as John, you know, 
stated out. It's, it wasn't a comical event, but, you know, it did become comical because John said if, you know, Travis or uh, Gregory decided to live after that life sentence, come back to life, they're going to go back for another life sentence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, again, I felt like justice was served. I don't, this isn't justice served. And I feel like this is um, a show. I feel like somebody may have leaked something and they're trying to get ahead of that. I feel like the attorney general, even though he's using all this pomp and circumstance, he's in on it. Um, um, Uncle Ruckus Jr., you know, he's the, uh, the isn't he the state senator uh, there? Oh, Mr. Cameron? Yes. No call the attorney. Mr. He's the uh, attorney general. Uncle Cameron. For Kentucky. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about this. Antoine, I know you've been following this for a while. Mm -hmm. Let's get your thoughts on it. Let's get John's thoughts. Let's get Steph's thoughts on this. Let's talk about this, guys. What are your what was your initial thought and thoughts when you heard about the convictions with the other officers? And then this one comes with the uh, good lit saying that she's just going to go ahead and enter a plea. What were you, what was your thoughts, Antoine? Um, so first of all, thank y'all for having me back. I'm always happy um, to your initial um, thoughts, right, or around uh, this is a specific, is very, very much on point. And um, one of the things that I want us to be aware of is what we deem justice to be and what we deem justice not to be, right? So even in the case of where we are talking about like Ahmaud Aubrey, I don't necessarily consider that justice served because it's a reinforcement of the state, right? It is the state I do understand Black people like are saying in, in that moment, right? And the reason why I'm saying that is because it's going to connect with what um, with my initial thoughts with Breonna Taylor. Um, here in, first of all, I'll start off with Malcolm X, right? Malcolm X said that the Black woman is the most unprotected person <laughs> in the United Ooh. States. And mm -hmm. here that statement remains true. And I really need people to put on their critical lens and critical thinking case um the initial officers charged in brianna's case are not represented at the federal level the only one that uh remains is hankinson who was found not guilty right so no one is being held responsible for the murder of brianna taylor what these folks are being held responsible for is violating the state that is a very nuanced important point to. So at the federal level, for this to be masqueraded as, okay, we are getting justice for Breonna Taylor, no, you are not. What you are pursuing is the violation of the rights of the state. And what the rights of the state says is that we must have the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. We all know that part of the of the sworn in, swearing in statement, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what these officers are uh, being held accountable for, right? None of uh, them will be held accountable for the death of Breonna Taylor, right? Um, I'm not even sure in looking at the documents that I have seen um, in, in preparing for this interview, I did not even see where Goodlit um, is being held responsible for even uh, forging an affidavit, right? Like now she's being held mm -hmm. accountable for, okay, a false affidavit. Okay, that's something, but I'm talking about the forging of a document, right? So uh, Brianna's ex, Brianna Taylor's ex-boyfriend is who they were looking for. Um, Jamarcus Glover, I believe is his name. And by the time they had went into Brianna Taylor's apartment, they had already had him arrested, right? And she forged the document and put the 1240 time on there as opposed to 12 midnight that was already on there. So 40 minutes later is when Breonna Taylor is killed. And what I, the reason why I bring this up is I want us to be really, really careful about how we frame this as justice for Breonna Taylor. This is not justice for Breonna Taylor. What this is, is the state enforcing 
its rights. And Merrick Garland is at the middle of this. And, um, you know, just briefly, um, I, you know, I, I really want us to pay attention. I really, I really want us to pay attention to Merrick Garland and what's happening on the larger uh, stage of American politics. Is that there is a wrestle between the state and the federal arm right now, right? Trump is at the middle of that, and certainly this case is at the middle of that. And what this is is the federal arm saying to the state of Kentucky, "You." did not do what you were supposed to do and these officers violated the state so therefore now we are going to cross you vis-a-vis -vis states rights right and assert the federal rights because our rights have been violated as a state and we're going to pursue these charges this brings up uh the conversation of states rights versus uh the, the federal arm and all black people should know what states rights means okay <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so those are my initial thoughts this is not about brianna taylor and i want to be very very clear about that and i think black people should be very careful and rejoicing about this this is about the reinforcement of the state ultimately that's what it comes down to but also you know open to other um perspectives on this as well steph john um well for me um a lot of what antoine stated mirrors what i've been thinking over the last couple of days but i'm i'm gonna keep it real short and simple today because i want to choose my words carefully um, and I know people are always tired of me saying, you know, as a black woman, but I don't know how else to come at you all because, I mean, it's what I am. Um, as a black woman who right now sitting in my apartment, if the cops came in here with a no knock warrant and killed me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we are disposable. And I say that because, again, this is not justice for Breonna Taylor. This has nothing to do with Breonna Taylor. And that was my very thought even before Antoine just said it. Um, but so many of us are going to skip that because we fail to educate ourselves on what's really going on. And we're going to be happy about this. And again, there is no justice for this young lady who was killed for no reason. You understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. as a black woman, I just feel real raw, real emotional, real unprotected and real disposable. I mean, I, I don't know how else to put it. Um, you know, when situations like this happen, I've, I've started turning my television off. And I know that's a bad thing because I'm one of those people. I like to know what's going on. But I've started mm -hmm. turning my television off because the more I see, the more I read, the more I hear, the more disgusted I become because it feels like black women, like we're just yesterday's trash. Yeah. Um, I've been saying that since the beginning of this case because, of course, not you all. I'm not going to lump everybody um into and, and put you all into one little box but for the most part it just feels like black men didn't care that's mm -hmm. just my take on it you know mm -hmm. feel free to disagree it just feels like black men didn't care about brianna losing her life you're not wrong and, in that um, because floyd floyd got all the attention and it was like mm -hmm. you did it was pretty much silent mm -hmm. from the black male mm -hmm. men in on mm -hmm. the support Right. And the outrage when it came to Brianna Taylor. So you're a hundred percent dead on on that. And that's been the case with a lot of things. Um, I hate to take it here, but I look at Brittany Griner, and I mean, I have my my thoughts about what's going on with her too. But I actually saw somebody try to compare, you know, everybody saying bring Brittany home to Iman Shumpert getting arrested for having marijuana, and they were like, "Are you all gonna, um, you know, say we are Iman too?" And I'm sitting there looking like apples and oranges. These are two totally different things. Iman wasn't in prison. In, he's not in prison in Russia. Mm. It seems like every time something happens to a black woman, here comes black men be like, well, what about this black man? What about that black man? It's always you want to diminish the value of that black woman. And it's, it's tiring. It's exhausting. And it's heartbreaking. So... This is one of those situations where, you know, I'm very opinionated. Everybody knows that about me. This is one of these situations where I'm just going to have to sit back and, and just watch. Um, 
because I feel like the more I discuss it, the more I try to talk to people about it, the more my heart breaks. So um, yeah. I feel like I'm at a loss as to what to do, to be honest. So just my Understood. Understood. Um, that, that's pretty much how it's played. John, did you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, it's just a uh, dog and pony show at this particular point. Um, fed to the masses mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, to make us think that uh, justice uh, will be served as Antoine mentioned before there's essentially uh, no mention or acknowledgement that uh, of uh, that someone was murdered uh, by state agents i.e. Breonna Taylor and um, other black lives are uh, put at risk uh, because of the farce uh, investigation and affidavits and um, uh, testimony that wasn't testimony from uh, a, a mail clerk or something like that to determine if um, the uh, ex uh, drug dealer boyfriend was there. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I just feel as though um everyone's falling for the banana in the tailpipe uh, once again. And I don't think anything substantive is going to come from this or going to come from this rather. Um, Once again, it's just uh, uh, another uh, farce uh, for the masses to go ahead and consume uh, under the guise of quote unquote justice, uh, which is not what this is. So, um, I don't know what the litigation is going to. I, I, once again, I don't know. They 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 say that the other three individuals are uh, could spend life in prison, but uh, at this particular point, uh, the violent act uh, that was uh, perpetrated by uh, these individuals, uh, they're not going to have to serve any time for that. So, I hate to say it is what it is at this particular point, but. I guess I'm uh, desensitized and numb at this particular point because uh, nothing has changed. And once again, it's uh, basically being fed, uh, spoon fed uh, BS uh, once again. I mean, I, I, I will say, I'm sorry, Keith, were you going? Go ahead. No, no, no. You go right ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Um, you know, I, I will say like these like the the points that both like John and Steph are bringing up like is definitely um spot on right and this is why I say like this is about the state asserting its rights um particularly when we look at uh Kelly Goodlett right um it's alleged at least at this point in time until it manifests right that the federal arm of the state has been able to um get at her in such a way that she will now that she's alleged to be testifying against her colleagues right um and that if that is the case um that she will not receive any more than than five years i suspect that they will find a trap door for this white woman to fall through as american society always Mm. um and The reason why I come to the analysis of, um, I always try to invite people into my thinking in terms of like why this is about the state, why, excuse me, why this is about the federal arm asserting its rights over the state and how this becomes like states' rights versus the federal arm, right? That's what I was going to ask you. Is that when we look closely at this case, right? A lot of people say, well, Antoine, how do you come to that conclusion? Is that the Department of Justice also currently has an investigation open against the Louisville Metro Police Department, right? right? And they are investigating them for, and I quote, engaging in a pattern of law enforcement misconduct, improper searches and seizures, and racial profiling, right? Mm. That is an exact attack, as some right-wingers would say it, on states. So not only are they conducting a side investigation, but then they are coming forward and they are saying you violated this part of the federal code and mandate that all states in the United States have agreed to. And by way of these persons, 
we are now going to assert this. So when we step back and we look um, at the broader landscape of the United States, we are in very interesting times. And this is where uh, uh, Steph's viewpoint definitely comes 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 in and is made concrete, right? It reminds me of Donald Trump burying his ex-wife on his golf course. Because Ooh. now what we are doing is we are finding ways to extract value from the body of the woman, right? To That's assert what she was buried. And re- yeah. Yes. And <laughs> had to pay, her estate had to pay a fee or something? Yeah, and he is exempt from um, taxes because now his golf course is considered like a cemetery, like burial ground, et cetera, wow, right? I didn't know but that. one of, okay. but like, like the, the point that I'm getting at is this value that we extract from the bodies of dead women, mm-hmm. right? So even in their deaths, it becomes about um, reinforcing the political economy of the state. Whether it's a golf course or whether it's the Department of Justice saying you have violated us and we're going to assert our rights vis-a-vis this dead black woman to make this happen. Or whether in Trump's case, I'm going to assert my right, right, to do this particular thing vis-a-vis the body of my dead ex-wife. And so we we really have to be careful about how we are understanding justice, how we are understanding uh, the animation and mechanics of the state and what this means. But I do want to reinforce by as far as I can that this is not about Breonna Taylor. And I want black Mm -hmm. folks to be aware of that. It is about the state extracting value from what took place in Kentucky and being able to say, we now, as the federal arm, the federal representation of the United States, all 50 states put together, including Puerto Rico, will now exercise this right over Kentucky and the particular strain that that creates in this political moment as the right goes further right and as we are dealing with Trump still in the middle of the United States. And we really have to pay attention to what those moves are and, and what's happening here. Wow. Wow. So let me ask you this, Antoine. Who is representing? So it's a federal thing, right? Mm -hmm. Is what you're saying. So is the state fighting back against the federal in this case? In this particular instance, what I see is the federal actually fighting against the state as opposed to the state fighting against the federal because what the state did was it allowed for a for those who actually killed Breonna Taylor right to escape Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they were found not guilty Kentucky said we have done our due diligence we sent it before a jury they are not guilty they've been fired Mm -hmm. from their jobs which doesn't keep them by the way from being hired by the highway patrol or another jurisdiction just to put that out there right one of these police Mm -hmm. officers were actually allowed to retire right Uh, yeah (laughs) Yeah, she resigned yeah she resigned for the police department yeah what one resigned one one retired so the state said we have it, we have um, allowed you this this back door escape route, and the federal is say ah uh, ah uh, not so quick, right? And where have we seen this conversation before, Black folk? Now, at the most basic rudimentary level, we have seen it at the case of slavery, right? This is why right. we have Juneteenth, right, right, right. Federally, we were there. Texas was like not so quick. We need some cotton, right? But then. <laughs> Also, when it comes to Jim Crow laws, <laughs> right, mm-hmm. certain states were like, fine, we will desegregate, we will integrate, and other states were like, ah, we're going to take advantage of that with all deliberate speed that's in the Brown versus Borkies. And this is what happens when, as scholars, we talk about if you do not know your stuff, you are doomed to repeat it. And what I would warn folks of 
even though most people do not see a connection between Trump and Breonna Taylor, there is definitely a connection here. And what I will warn people of is to be very careful because we are treading like thin ice is not even the word. We are treading on very, very, very thin ice. We need to be very aware of how Hitler came came to to rise in Germany. Right. Or came to power in Germany, rather. And how Trump is in that same story. Those things are being executed vis-a-vis the narrative and experience of Breonna Taylor. So now the federal arm hat is now coming in and is fighting the state of Kentucky and say, you didn't do this, but we're going to do this and we're going to masquerade it as justice for Breonna Taylor when that is not the case. It is really the federal arm flexing and saying, we got this power. Now, what are you as a state of Kentucky going to do about it? Right? Yes. And if I'm not mistaken, Mitch McConnell is a senator from Kentucky. Yes. Yes, he is. Which complicates this picture even more. So Ooh. what where does what is uh Attorney General Daniel Cameron play into this? Almost let a word slip out my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ruckus Jr. You should Uncle let it Ruckus come Jr. on out. You should let it come on out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. He comes in to play with this because those of us who, who study law know this, right? Um, that, that when there isn't a charge or when there isn't a indictment, we have this same. That if a prosecutor who is representing the state wants to prosecute a ham sandwich, they can get it done. Mm-hmm. That is the same, right? Mm-hmm. And if he wanted this to move forward in a particular way, he could have made this happen in a particular way. But he, too, is complicit in this state project, right? So mm-hmm. he 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 bears, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He, culpability. He, yes, thank you. That's exactly it. He bears culpability in what is happening here. He allowed, if their escape door that was allowed for these agents of the state, i.e. cops, to escape, he built the frame, he built the door, and he unlocked it with the key. Wow. That is his responsibility in this. Because understand, if a state wants to prosecute you, you're going down. Believe me when I say every piece of evidence that Merrick Garland and whichever agents he put on from the forged documents to the conversation that took place in the garage he was aware of as the attorney general. Mm-hmm. He was aware of. And to me, that brings up qu- brings up questions of ethics, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I don't want to say, okay, what did he know? What did he know? Oh, no, brother, you knew. Yeah. You knew. You saw the whole picture and you decided to withhold. It's no different than, than, than what we've learned, you know, for those of us who study uh, the Black Power and Civil Rights Movement. It's no different from those of us who have studied all of the um, Federal Bureau of Investigation documents post these happenings. They knew everything that was happening. This brother knew. He knew. He knew documents were forged. But it all becomes about Blue Lives Matters, defend the state, and of course, Blue Lives Matters uh, raiding Mar-a-Lago, mm. right? It's what? Blue Lives Matters until we run up in the Capitol on January 6th. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. this is what I'm talking about. Like, Black people, as I cannot stress this enough. Y'all caught me before class is beginning in a few weeks. Um, so I cannot stress, <laughs> I cannot stress this enough. We literally have to understand the connection between Brianna. And what is happening on the larger national scene with the United States in this wrestle that's happening between the federal arm of the state to advance its rights, et cetera, up against states, and then Trump's very much campaign to delegitimize the state, right? And that whole playbook is straight up out of Hitler. We are on some stuff that we need to be over. 
And so I would not look for the federal arm, the Department of Justice, to say these people are responsible for um, murdering Breonna Taylor because none of the murderers are on the stand in federal courts. You understand? What they right. are on the stand for is submitting a false warrant. That false warrant has nothing to do with Breonna Taylor. It has everything to do with federal violations. You violated the federal, right? They will never be held accountable for, for this black woman's life. And herein, this is the space where Breonna Taylor and um, I Ivana Trump, right, share space in that the lives of women are being used to further reinforce the power and reach of the federal arm of the United States, right? But also facilitate this battle between states' rights and federal rights that, as a people, we have seen before. I'm not sure if any of this is making sense, but hopefully it uh, is. Yes, it's plenty of sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it is. So there was no judge involved. They forged the signature of that no knock warrant. Mm -hmm. Are we to believe? Do you believe that, though? No, I, I don't believe that. Um, I, I believe that a judge absolutely signed that document. I believe that the judge went off of the information that cops gave them, mm -hmm. right, that, that they contrived. So let's be clear about the situation when, um, as an archivist, right, my, my dissertation work for those, because people are always like, prove your PhD. Well, here we go. Uh, <laughs> part, of, part of the PhD, right, is I am, a I am an archivist. That is part of my methodological approach. And when we look at the documents, right, in this particular instance, what we know is that that judge moved forward based off of gave them and what we do know is and this is to steph's point right that these cops colluded with one another they knew that mr glover who is uh brianna taylor's ex-boyfriend was not in the was not in her apartment they said that actually her apartment was a soft target so if it was a soft target why are we busting down doors right if mm -hmm. it's a soft target why is um uh, why is one of the cops moving from the to the back to the back window to shoot uh bullets through through that window right uh wh why is all of that that happening and it's because these cops colluded to keep black people in their place remember the name of this particular unit within this particular police department was place based investigations hmm. i cannot underscore that enough the name place-based investigations that have that has now been disbanded obviously and what that says to me is even though brianna taylor's apartment was quote unquote a soft target it's in the documents y'all go look it up they still served that warrant after they had apprehended mr glover brianna taylor ended up dead after they had um apprehended mr glover because they wanted to re people belong in the state of Kentucky. And I'm here to tell you now, while I'm not a scholar on Kentucky, I have read plenty of black studies on the state of Kentucky. And Kentucky is a place-based state where black people are expected to stay in a certain place and do a certain thing. So even in uh, going to her apartment, it was about keeping this young black woman in place. It, mm. it in, her, in her boyfriend that they knew of, right? Um, and shout out to him who who shot the officer in the leg, right? Um, who's mm -hmm. the charges were later dropped that the state of Kentucky tried to um, bring up trumped yeah. up charges against him, um, and they ended up dropping those charges. But yes, I absolutely believe a judge signed off on it based upon um, the, the 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 false uh, narratives that that these cop that these cops contrived to bring that um, former officer Goodlett is expected to testify against her colleagues about. And ultimately, at the end of the day, this is about keeping black people in place, because what we do know is that the United States is headed toward a majority of people of color very quickly. And mm. it is about keeping people checked in their place. Stay in this apartment complex. Don't you dare cross the street. And I honestly think that's what that lesson is about. Right. Part of the reason. And I 
I, I know this may sound jumpy, but I have to connect this, right? Um, part of the reason that Rodney King ends up getting the shit beat out of him is that he gets in his car and he drives to a completely different part of Los Angeles. For those people who know Los Angeles, the Rodney King beating does not take place in South Central. It takes place over in the suburbs of Los Angeles, right? And that beating was about you are out of place. And the reason why I say that is because Rodney King is in the 90s, my brother. We are now in uh, the, the 21st century in 2000. You understand what I'm saying? And now we have place-based investigations now killing a dear sister because they want to make sure stay your ass in place. And if you don't want your life to be threatened, don't date these particular kind of... There's a very specific message that the state of Kentucky is sending here. And so there are undertones. There, there are high levels of analysis that have to go into this. But we are definitely talking about both the gendered and racial terrain of... And to answer your question, I know that was a long ass answer, I'm sorry, but to answer your question, the judge absolutely signed off on it, absolutely knew, and unfortunately, the life of Breonna Taylor is um, being used as a type of collateral for the federal arm of the United States to assert its rights against Kentucky that plays up against this backdrop of Trump trying to... He's very much um, a, a certain thing of do not trust the federal, do not trust Merrick Garland, even someone that he appointed in the FBI. Don't trust him either. Right. Um, and this is the way that these two narratives meet and connect. And unfortunately, it will never be justice for Breonna Taylor. But we do need to talk about the very specific ways in which the life, the body and the experiences of Breonna Taylor are being leveraged once again to float the rights of the federal arm of the United States, much in the same way that the bodies of black women in enslavement were leveraged and used to perpetuate slavery vis-a-vis -vis, uh, rape and forced, quote unquote, breeding as plantation masters um, stated in plenty records that we have access to. I hope that made sense. <laughs> yes, it did. I like how you brought that down in the end. Now, Antoine, for the people that may have questions, can you explain to them what an archivist is? So in our case, um, what we do is we go everywhere, right? Um, my particular research looks into gender law, race, society. Um, I am a critical race theorist, right? I was a critical race theorist before the Republican Party started attacking it, right? I've studied mm -hmm. under all of them. Cheryl Harris, Devin Carbato, Kimberly Crenshaw, all of them. Um and what an archivist does is we go into the records, right? In my particular case, because I study law and society, Specifically, right? Um, I go into courthouses. I go into prisons. Yes, prisons have an archive. Courthouses have an archive. Um, police departments have an archive. And I look at those documents and I look at those documents closely. Um, and what I do at the first pass is I read those documents for the narrative that the state would have us to believe, right? That means taking the document on face value. Then what I do is I go back and real for what's under the surface of just the evidence that's there. So essentially what, a arch what an archivist is, excuse me, is someone who looks at a historical record and historical can be something from 100 years ago. Historical can even be yesterday. Right? The words that we have all spoken like within this podcast now because they are in the past are now considered history. And so I look at all of those things and I analyze them. I look at the evidence. I weigh and balance it. What does this mean? What is the narrative that the state would have us to believe versus what do we know the truth to be, right? It's like the United States has a narrative of King that they would want us to believe about Martin Luther King. But then there's the true narrative of King that Coretta would have told us about, right? <laughs> um, so that's essentially the job of an archivist. It is, it is uncovered. It is a very tested terrain i will say that right which is part of my problem in the academy um there is the american history and american narratives that folks would have us to believe they would have us to believe um like for example the it, we're talking about brianna taylor 
the uh the 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 what is in the archive now is that we are to believe that Brianna Taylor's death is justified. They were found not guilty. We weighed and balance the but the job of a critical archivist is to go in there and turn out everything. I consider an archivist to be this, an investigative journalist, which is why I love my job. Because I'm an investigative journalist. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to ask very specific questions. And nine times out of 10, I'm going to come out with a differing opinion that you're more run of the white scholar is not going to come out with because they're going to come out with an opinion that reinforces their viewpoint. I'm going to come out with an opinion that speaks to the experiences of Black women, hopefully and prayerfully. I always invite sisters to criticize my work. Let me know where I went wrong. Um, you know, and and I'm going to come out with an experience that speaks to Black people. So it's, it's very much a political thing. But that's what an archivist is. We're an investigative journalist that goes deeper than Channel 9, CNN, MSNBC, et cetera. Okay. Thank you for that. Really appreciate that. Um, before we move on, because I, I did want to kind of touch on something that you were referencing earlier. Uh, Steph, John, did you have anything else in regards to um, this news about everything that's going on with Breonna Taylor's? Uh, well, it ain't Breonna Taylor's case about the state and the federal. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've done it. Okay. You know, nope. just very dangerous times at this particular point. So states do what you're supposed to do. So we don't end up in a more centralized uh, authoritarian uh, regime. Yeah, absolutely. So, Antoine, you were referencing uh, Donald Trump, mm -hmm. former president um, and his war against the federal, uh, the government. So to speak. And he is war. <laughs> yes. Yes, he is. So if you guys don't know, I'm going to reference the New York mag dot com intelligence, sir. Um, a week ago, FBI searched Donald Trump's Mario Lago home. The former president and many of his Republican allies continue to rage against federal law enforcement, even mm -hmm. after a warrant revealed that agents were investigating potential violations of the Espionage Act and that they found multiple top secret documents. The warrant was unsealed on Friday, a day after Attorney General Merrick Garland, here he goes again, announced that the Justice Department had filed a motion in court to do so. Though reporting indicates that the FBI was seeking documents involving nuclear secrets, there are still many unanswered questions about what they were trying to find and whether they found it. Here's what we've learned so far about the investigation. What does the warrant say? The search was related to potential violations of three laws, including the Espionage Act, Espionage Act. One of the laws concerns the concealment, removal, or mutilation of classified materials. The second concerns gathering, transmitting, or losing materials. And a third pertains to obstructing an investigation into these matters. The warrant does not list Trump by name, does not accuse him or any, any other individual broke the law. So what did the search find? Attached to the warrant is a receipt of property that lists what the FBI took from the premises, listing dozens of entries with 11 containing classified materials ranging from most to least classified. One entry contains various classified TS SCI documents, which by law must be kept in a secure government facility akin to a vault. There are four sets of top secret documents, three secret and three confidential. On Thursday, the Washington Post reported that agents believe some of the documents they went to look for involve nuclear weapons. But this was before the search, and it is not known if such documents were recovered. It was not clear whether they pertain to U.S. weapons or those of a foreign country or the precise sensitivity of the documents. In response to the reporting, Trump said on Truth Social that the nuclear weapons issue is a hoax. The FBI recovered an executive grant of clemency for Roger Stone, granted before Trump left office. Info, read President of France, a handwritten note, a leather-bound box of documents, and binders of photos. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I find this funny. I, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm 
I'm trying not to laugh about all this um, because I know there's something much more at stake here. And you were talking about this earlier in reference to Breonna Taylor. So and, and, and you really blew me away. You and Steph, uh, Steph confirming. I did not know that. Uh, what's her name? Ivanka. It was her name. Ivana. Ivanka. Ivana. Trump. Ivana was buried on that man's golf course. I had no freaking idea. None. Uh, so the next thing is what caused the feds to go looking attorney general Garland said during remarks Thursday that he would not explain why he personally signed off on seeking a search warrant, but that the department does not take such a decision lightly where possible. It is standard practice to seek less intrusive means as an alternative alternative to a search and to narrowly scope any search that is undertaken. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to this. So Antoine, come on, let's jump into it. <laughs> Let- <laughs> I mean, this is a long article. I, you, you already got it, brother. So come on, let's jump into it. Let's, let's discuss this thing here. Let's jump in. Right. And so this is what I meant, meant earlier by Merrick Garland is at the middle of this. And I hope that what you just read allows people to zoom out and understand what is taking place on the larger stage in these United States of America, as the, as the president always states. Right. We mm-hmm. are literally dealing with the battle for the United States and what I um, want to compel people to really, really do. And this is not meant as hyperbole. This is not meant as exaggerating. I am very serious when I tell people this. Please research how the rise of Hitler happened. Mm -hmm. Please research that, right? Um, Because the Nazi party was not a mainstream party. Let's be clear about that in Germany at, at the time, right? And so Trump's whole thing here is he doesn't have to say what indoor department of justice is doing is incorrect he just really has to create enough doubt Mm. and you know i understand people you know want to uh of course get at the documents you know yes it's true he could face up to 10 years of imprisonment if found guilty um and if it goes and if it goes to trial i personally do have concerns about trump's very close affiliation with russia and um and and other you know interesting world leaders that he shook hands with across the South Korean, but of course, across, excuse me, the South Korean border, uh, which that's only North Korea. So y'all know who I'm talking about. Uh, (laughs) um, (laughs) Right. Like there are some serious concerns there. And the fact that you allegedly have nuclear um, information that you have this top secret information, right. But we also have to be aware of the splintering of the United States. Now, let me be clear. I'm not, y'all know me now. I'm not a person. What? the United States, right? That's just that's just not my thing. That's not me. Right. However, I do want us to be very, very aware of the the very clear moves that Trump is making here, right? He's creating doubts. There is this battle with federal law enforcement, right? Who, let's be clear, if something goes down with Breonna Taylor, I know the conservatives in Kentucky, that conservatives have went so far, right? Mitch McConnell no longer longer has control, right? Conservatives have went so far, right? That Ted Cruz will allow Donald Trump to call his wife all types of names and not care, right? Mm -hmm. Conservatives have went so far, right? That Marco Rubio is now begging to lick the bottom of Donald Trump's feet, right? Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. where we are. So um, I, I... Again, I do have concerns about uh, relationships. I do want to know what's behind him in this obsession with Macron, who is uh, the chancellor of uh, France, right, and what that means for these documents. But ultimately, what I want people to pull away with from this is please see the larger picture. Trump is facilitating this battle. And this and this goes back to, like, the first time I was on you all's show and I, and I stated that... Um, one judiciary and that's the only place that he needed to be at was judiciary like his legacy is there Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right how this syncs up is he gets all of this doubt created 
and the judiciary will do stuff like letting the killers of Breonna Taylor get off free, therefore allowing this, this type of tension to take place between the federal arm and the state, while on the larger national level, he creates this ruckus about doubt. All he has right? He'll say it's a farce. I don't know why they are um, invading Mar-a-Lago. And let's be clear, Trump bro broke that news himself. Trump broke that news himself, which, first of all, I will give it to Merrick Garland. That was a genius move. When you're dealing with a narcissist, just do it quietly, and they don't come out and say it, right? Yeah. So right. He, he did he you know did say that, and then we cannot you know forget about Ivana Trump being buried on his golf course because that's him further sticking it further federal um, to, to the federal arm of the United States vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the, the Treasury Department, right? Oh, I'm not going to have to pay these taxes now because now I have this dead body that is, on my, that is on my golf course who probably would never want to be there. Let's be clear about that, right? Right. Um, so these are the things that, 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 we, that we have to be aware of. I, you know, I do think it's important that uh, the Department of Justice vis-a-vis -vis Merrick Garland um, is, has asked the courts affidavit we can see everything else but do not unveil that affidavit or do not unseal it and i think really what we are talking about if we're being honest here and my honest opinion is that i do believe that this is an issue of national security i do believe that there is an issue with transmitting as well as obstruction right we dealt with this while he was in the white house uh mm -hmm. talking to people that the united states as a nation state would have never talked to um mm -hmm. I do want folks to understand we have a while while many people who organize um in in protest different things of that sort have asked for a third party and i believe that there is you know validity in that there is this third partiness that's rising in the united states that the gop and or the republican party cannot contend with and that's what we're talking about here that's really What's what we're What's the third party? Party is the MAGA party. That's the Make America Great Again party. We're talking about Trump's lawyers, allegedly. Let me cover y'all, allegedly. Um, leak documents. <laughs> Thank you. To... <laughs> you got nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like leak leak documents to uh, Breitbart, and they doxed two FBI agents. They docs to FBI agents. Oh, did we lose? Did we lose them? Sound like we He's lost documents. you. Oh, you we lost you there for a second. Yeah, we lost you. <laughs> we lost you at doxing. Oh, can can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay, I, I'm I'm sorry. Um. So uh, I'll, I'll back up a little bit, right? So, uh, and, I, and, I, and I hope that's not calling to pro. Shout out to y'all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, so Braybart uh, is, is alleged to have leaked these documents, right? And they have docked two FBI agents within those documents that Trump's lawyers allegedly leaked to Braybart, right? That they docked mm -hmm. to FBI agents. Um, next, we know that allegedly the Department of Justice slash the FBI um, is also dusting these documents for fingerprints. Who touched them? Who might sneak over to Mar a Lago? We know that Mar a Lago um, does uh, host many international foreign leaders of influence who the United mm -hmm. States would never fuck with. We know that mm -hmm. for, for certain and that they pay for those, act, those points of access. So at what point do we consider Trump a domestic terrorist or a domestic threat, right? What is his motivation for this? What is the intention? And so really what we are watching being played out stage as a whole is we are watching this battle go down between Trump, Merrick Garland, and even Trump's own appointed person to the FBI. Because remember, he fired James Comey. That's right. He got him up out of there and he appointed his own person. And now he's fighting against that person. But what's even more interesting is that the governor of the state of Florida, the crazy, or DeSanto, DeSantis, <laughs> excuse me, right? You know, this past week, it said that the FBI raid was justified. And I'm interested Whoa. in what? knowing what is this relationship 
that that is happening and what is the conversation that Trump is happening with him? Because now it is alleged that DeSantis is gearing up for a I presidential you, run. Listen. And, and what and what does that mean, right? So we have some very interesting stuff happening here. And what I want black people to understand, I've said this before on the show, not our fight. Mm-hmm. This is not our fight. We are dealing with once again, history will repeat itself for those who do not understand it in very nuanced terms and ways. It is not a mistake that less than 25% of the US population holds a bachelor's degree. Mm-hmm. And that is because when you step into collegiate spaces and you contend with this history and you know better. Then you do better. And let me be clear, like when you go to the right university, you take the right courses, right? Because we have <laughs> we have people that come out of Harvard and Yale that are still idiots. Uh, hey, nice. Clarence Thomas. Um, okay. woo. <laughs> I love it, love it. But, you know, so it doesn't mean that just because, you know, you go to college, you have like some type of thing. But it does. But what I'm trying to get at is that we, we really got to understand you all, this larger push and pull that's happening on the national and Trump is absolutely trying to disrupt what well, not trying. He is disrupting the United States as we understand it. If you mm-hmm. ask me, uh, going back to Roe versus Wade, that is just the breach in the wall. We're about to see some serious, serious stuff happening here. And it, and it starts with Trump just creating doubt. And there will be states that are states of refuge and, 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 and quote unquote a refuge state or a safe state. I believe California will. Um, you know, what the state of Washington will probably be one of those states, right? Um, we really have to be careful with what we're doing here. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to say the same, and I'll shut up after this because I know I've been talking for a minute, so let me shut up. Um, I'm going to say the same thing here, as I said with Breonna Taylor. It's not necessarily about the fact that he has documents, even though that's important to national security, and I believe it to be important, and I believe he's definitely doing something. Mm-hmm. What is on the agenda here is this battle between federal and the state. Some people want a centralized state. Some people say states' rights, right? But that largely that is a right-wing conversation. And what Merrick Garland and others in uh, Biden with his moderate self is trying to say mm-hmm. is that we got to keep these United States together. Everybody's mm-hmm. got to be together, right? Mm-hmm. But now what that Roe versus Wade breach allows to happen is this conversation of states' rights. What this Breonna Taylor case thing allows to happen, again, is this conversation of states' rights versus the federal arm. And what the federal is saying is that we have overarching power over the United States collectively. But when we examine, quote, unquote, the founding fathers, right, what their desire was, then this is true, I will give them this, is that they wanted more states' rights in very limited federal intervention. Right. But states' rights means we now got to have a conversation about what Black people can and cannot do, right? And different things mm-hmm. of that sort. And Trump is playing on this in a very specific way. Do not trust the... He's saying do not trust the federal um, arm of the state. Do not trust the FBI. Keith, can you believe... Y'all, John, Steph, all oh, y'all, can you believe it? The The... The, the conservatives came out and said, defund the FBI. I said, hot damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so hot right. damn. I never yeah. thought I would see where Black Lives Matter and the ultra right would meet. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. Defund the FBI? Like, Marjorie Taylor Greene is, is, is like high key doing fundraising, and so is Trump, right? Vis a vis defund FBI. Now, what these That's Blue Lives Matter leader. folks. There it is. What these Blue Lives Matter folks are going to have to explain to me is how that is different from defund the police. Right. They can't. This is what I... <laughs> they can't. And I'll shut up on that note. Let me sit with a little drink. <laughs> <I listen. laughs> you messing with the Supreme Leader. Now, what what is what is going to be interesting for me is the shaping of this upcoming presidential election, right? From oh, yes. the right side. Because now you have DeSantis who embodies what the far right MAGA ideals are. And, and he's kept those. 
and you have Trump, who was the originator, the supreme leader. However, on some of the things, he's kind of wavered away from that, you know, with the whole vaccination and and all those other things, uh, staying masked up and and things like that. He kind of wavered there and lost a little support. So it's going to be interesting to see what this is going to look like for what is it? Twenty twenty four. Right. Yes. That's right. These have been the longest two years uh, yes. since Biden. Been- <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> listen, man. Like, it feels like we don't even have a president right now. We just free balling out here. Let me, I'm telling you. <laughs> no I'm support. No you. undergarments. Just Nothing. let me swing. <laughs> we went from right one extreme to the next. Yeah. In, this, in these last six years, we went from one extreme to the next. And... It's just going to be interesting to see who's going to get behind who, because now I believe now that you you said what just happened this last week with DeSantis said, I think they the, the supporters of DeSantis have got him his chest pumped up enough and his head blown up enough to mm-hmm. let, make him to believe that he can overtake Trump. You He's not going to be it. Trump's running mate. You better say it. So. Really, black folks, this really isn't our fight because they about to have war on that side. They are, but when I tell y'all, like, as a black woman, I want to get the hell out of Georgia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's Georgia, it's Texas, and John and I are at the battlegrounds right now. Because oh, yeah. where, where 45 boy. live and where DeSantis live, mm-hmm. here. They ain't about but to you know, me up but over here. My, I my like my no taxes is, though. My my <laughs> question is that. for Steph, right? Like, I want to know how. So we know Georgia's politics, right? And so mm-hmm. the extreme right that is located in Georgia is saying defund the FBI. I want to know how you are balancing that with Stacey Abrams saying give police more money. Listen, mm, you know what? what? I'm glad you brought that up, Antoine, because Keith can back me up on this. When Stacey ran for governor before, I tried to warn people about Stacey Abrams. Yes, and I she say did. that because I remember, you know, me doing what I do for a living and, and going to different fundraisers and stuff like this. I can remember, distinctly remember Stacey Abrams rubbing elbows with with the likes of people like Brian Kemp and those from the Republican camp. Oh wow. So when she came out, I was like, what happened? Like when did when did this happen? You know, and people, let me tell you, they they were dragging me through the mud for talking mm-hmm. about Stacy. And so mm-hmm. when she said that the other day, I'm like, hmm. Hmm. I remember trying to warn everybody about Stacy. I yeah. don't trust her. And the mm-hmm. same goes for now Andre Dickens, who they were gonna Woo! die if they didn't get him in office. <laughs> <laughs> ha! Ha! let's go there let's go there they were gonna die if they didn't get him in office and i will admit andre had me fooled he had me fooled i was like oh andre is gonna be so good for atlanta the minute he was sworn in more money for these police stations more mm. All the, we need a bigger police presence the police officers are killing people left and right in atlanta we don't need a bigger police presence Mm. Have mercy, mm-hmm. Lord, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when the coons but, come you to know, town. You, mm. you got wow. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, raccoons, you know, when they come out, they're looking for trash. I'm screaming that's right exactly, now. That's exactly, <laughs> what, that's exactly what Andre Dickens and Stacey Abrams are doing. And they're rubbing around looking for that trash here in Georgia. And that's why I say as a black woman, I got to get the hell out. Wow. Wow. Ooh, talk to us about trash. <laughs> Listen, people people talked about Kasim Reed, and yeah, Kasim mm. was a little crooked, but Kasim wasn't out there rubbing elbows with these conservatives. He wasn't kissing conservative ass, excuse my language. So say what you want about Kasim Reed, and which, you know, our friend of, a sh- of the show, Rock and I, we have our hang ups about Kasim. Kasim mm. wasn't out here being a whole coon in these Atlanta streets. Mm. At least you knew who he was. Right. He's a crook. He's a liar. He's an adulterer, but he's not a coon. So wow. I so that's a him. different type of fight with Stacey Abrams and uh, the other guy. Y'all not. He, they, they, wow. Wow. Right. But you know, Keith, honest, should, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Steph. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was about to say should somehow Stacey win that election. She's going to flip and be the female version of Andre Dickens when she gets in office. Mark my word. You heard it right now at 8, 17 p.m. on August 18th or August 15th, 2022. Ooh. I said that. 
So when it happens, if she makes it into office, I want people to reference what I said right here, right now. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this, right? I don't see like, you know, um, Stacey Abrams in um, the project that Trump is doing as separate. I see them as 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 one as one and the same, right? Stacey Abrams mm-hmm. is very much Team Merrick Garland. Keep the state together. We mm-hmm. believe in these United States. We believe. Right. Like, I think last time I was here, we we talked about the utility of the vote, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Stacey Abrams believes in that federal project, right? It is that federal project that allows her to run for that office, right? It is Merrick mm-hmm. Garland who is saying no. Federal officers have a right. It is Stacey Abrams who's also saying, no, give officers more money. So, like, to be clear, Stacey Abrams and Merrick Garland is on the same team. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that and I think that it, that is very interesting. That's what I'm saying. Watch this thing with Trump. And if we are not careful, we are going to find ourselves in increasingly splintered United States that's going to... Um, find ourselves in a very, very interesting predicament. Keith, to your point, um, when DeSantis said that the SBI agents were justified in what they did, mm-hmm. the first thing that came across my mind was he's trying to go further right than Trump. Yes. Yep. He's trying to out Trump Trump. Yes. Um, and say, and he's trying and to I make... think he's And I think he can do it. Antoine. He's oh, he can absolutely that. do he's it. He's been showing and proven. <laughs> He's been showing and proving you, that. You know what? It's like black people, and I have to say this, God forgive me. We are so easily distracted. And I hate saying that. I hate saying that. Mm-hmm. But I look in Georgia with all of this funny stuff that's been going on as far as abortion and giving extra money to the police and all of this good stuff. You know, it's like they dangled those carrots of Ossoff and Warnock in our faces. Mm-hmm. And we took it. We got so excited about turning Georgia blue. And in the background, they were working on banning abortion. Mm-hmm. They were mm-hmm. working on funding the police. Mm-hmm. They were working on how to just keep us in this little conservative cage. So when I say I want out, I'm seriously looking for a way out of here. Well, I'm going to say this. Right now, 2024 is not looking from a presidential standpoint, it's not looking good on all fronts. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you. If DeSantis gets into, that, gets into that office in 2024, because if he beats Trump, he's going to beat Biden. You mark my words. Absolutely. If he gets in, Lord have mercy on the United States of America. Keith, at this point, I could beat Biden. <laughs> <laughs> facts are facts america uh, yeah. <laughs> demented hunk of doodle is riding bikes falling off of him catching covid he ain't doing nothing yeah. like yeah and kamala has disappeared nobody knows where well she, she didn't took off the chucks she didn't took off the pearls you know yeah. that was hey she had to get I, in you know yeah, i could can, I can admit she had me a little food a little <laughs> You know they all we we all get food around you know every yeah. four years so it, it happens you know what I mean now um, before we get out of here I just want to touch on one last thing with this whole Trump case Trump mm-hmm. had a notorious reputation this is still from the intelligence sir part on New York uh, mm-hmm. if you want to look it up New NYMag dot com intelligence sir um, it says Trump had a notorious reputation for mishandling and or destroying documents during his presidency. Mm-hmm. Some White House records obtained by the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection had been torn up and taped back together. The former president reportedly liked to try to flush documents down the toilet. A senior administration off official once told the Washington Post that White House staff members made sure they never left documents containing classified or sensitive information with Trump. So that gives you an idea of what's going on. There was also something that I totally missed that I wanted to touch on with everything that we were talking about with those um, with Joshua James and Goodlin and Kyle Meany in regards to the um, murder of Brianna Taylor. Mm-hmm. Um, real quick, I, and I know I'm going back, but I, I, I meant to touch on this earlier, and I just want to touch on this Let's before we back. get out of there. Okay. 
some pretty dark stuff. And th- this is what I found off of Twitter. And I and I know I sent this to you, Antoine. You know, uh, this has come to light. Joshua James and Cal Meany applied for a search warrant warrant under the penalty of perjury. In that SW, they made three false allegations. A, Brianna Taylor's ex-boyfriend was, was receiving packages to her home. B, he lived in her residence. And C, the post office confirmed this. Mm-hmm. False. All those were false. Correct. Two, they allegedly did these things with the knowledge that the execution of the no-knock warrant could cause to danger Taylor the officers and third parties Mm -hmm. when confronted with an investigation into the circumstances surrounding the warrant in the wake of Taylor's death, Meany and James attempted to cover it up by asking other officers to say that they told the officers this false information. Mm -hmm. I guess that's when they met in the garage somewhere. Um, Mm -hmm. In fact, these officers had been told affirmatively that Taylor's ex-boyfriend did not live there and was not receiving packages there. Correct. Meany and James wrote an investigative letter restating the falsehoods anyway. Oh, this is where the garage came in. Then yes. James met up with another officer in his garage to discuss how they needed to get their story straight about the lies that were put in the warrant affidavit. There are allegations that this convo was recorded. So who's the other officer? They ain't, they didn't name the other officer. Um, then James and Meany allegedly lied to the FBI about the lies and the subsequent cover up, telling the FBI that they've heard that they'd heard that the boyfriend got packages delivered to Taylor's home, knowing this was false. Uh, Officer Brett Hankerson was indicted for deprivation of the rights of Breonna Taylor, her boyfriend, and the neighbors in the apartment complex. After playing clothes, officers entered Taylor's home in the middle of the night. Her boyfriend shot once, hitting an officer. Officers then shot back from inside the apartment. Hankerson exited the apartment and began to shoot into the glass door that was covered with blinds. Allegedly, Hankerson shot towards other officers and into the apartments of the neighbors, shooting blindly in the night. The murder of Breonna Taylor was horrific, but the cover up is the most angering. How much of Daniel Cameron's refusal to properly investigate this case has perpetrated the perpetrated the continued injustice to Breonna Taylor? And that's it for that. Yes, indeed. So that's, that's it. It seems like there's some other people that have uh really went into this cover up and it said some other officers and things like that, but they haven't named any people other than officers. So it, it's it's the whole department, it's the whole it's the whole system and again, this is really as Antoine stated, this has nothing to do with Breonna Taylor with these most recent charges and black people don't celebrate, don't get happy about it um, because this isn't justice for her at all. Uh, I mean, justice would be this not happening at all, that that mm-hmm. she would still be here, um, you know, but anyways. So thank you, Antoine. We appreciate you coming on again. As we like to call you the professor. I always get requests. When is the professor coming back on? (laughs) We got to have the professor on our YouTube YouTube channel so they can see the professor. And and, and when he he gets excited, all them dreads just go to shaking. (laughs) (laughs) Them locks locks be going all over. Love Antoine. My mother is now a huge fan of Antoine, and she just asked me the other day. She's like, "When is Antoine coming back?" I didn't tell her she was, he was coming for this episode this week, so she's gonna be excited. good. Good. I yes. Yes. Him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I'm glad but, to be um, here. Thank you all for um, having me. It's always a pleasure to be uh, in conversation with you all. Yeah. No problem. Thanks, man. Well. That'll end it for us today. We ain't gonna do no top ten today, so we may do it on the uh, YouTube show. We'll see. 
Okay. But um, I think we've had our field today. Mr. Antoine, once again, giving us everything that we need. We are the Short Disc Podcast. Holla at your girl and your boys. That's the beauty of it. I grab a dog and I choke him. And I kick the shit out of him all day long. My foot up the dog's ass. Just bang, bang, bang up the dog's ass. That's my pleasure. <laughs>